Good afternoon, guys. It is October 2nd, 2023. In this video here, I want to go over some maintenance and troubleshooting on your Dyson um, ball. Um, this will basically cover a lot of your Dyson ball vacuums these days. Um, and these models will include the DC-41, the DC-65, um, and Dyson Ball Multi-Floor, Dyson Ball Animal 2, Dyson Ball Animal 3, Dyson Ball Animal Pro, Dyson Ball Animal Pro Plus, basically anything that has this general design. Um, so, yeah. So let me see if I can get this in shot for you. Um, so basically, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you keep hair and stuff out of this roller. Now, that's something that I recommend you just turn it over and pull out hair after each vacuuming. That's generally a good idea. But also, the number one thing is you want to empty the canister holding it over a trash can and dumping the contents um, preferably outside um, I tend to you know with bagless vacuum cleaners I tend to empty it outside because you know the whole purpose of vacuuming is to get rid of the dust and so to me it makes more sense to take it outside of the house and like just dump it in the garbage outside um yeah and pretty simple and especially if you have allergies now the next thing is the filters now you have one filter here and you'll know it's dirty if this inner white part is dark in color and uh, they say that you need to wash these once every three months um, it depends on your household some households that have a lot of dirt dust and debris you might want to do it once a month um, and some people can get away with six months honestly but you know, to me, at least every six months, you should wash these filters. Dyson's do a very good job of keeping the filters clean because their cyclones are so effective. Um, so Dyson's are arguably one of the best um, bagless machines as far as um, keeping the filters clean. Um, and so you're just going to rinse that under water, wring it out really good. Um, if they do smell, you can use a little bit of laundry detergent. Um, I would dilute the laundry detergent in a tub of water, like a sink of water or, or a bucket of water or something, and then just scrub it in there and then wring it out and then just rinse it under the tap. Um, but that's really only if you have like odors, you know, such as pet odors and stuff. Um, but yes. So, and you don't need very much detergent. Um, it does pretty well. And also you can get replacements for these uh, online. Um, all over Amazon and eBay and places like that. 
And then like I just did, uh, first of all, you want to make sure that this is completely dry. Um, it should be left to dry for at least 24 to 48 hours. You want to make sure it's bone dry, you know. Um, I mean, honestly, you can set it outside, you know, in the sun to dry and it'll be fine. Um, but don't put it like, you know, over a heater or anything like that. It's really not designed to take that. But if you put it out in the sun, you know, with a gentle breeze, it should help it dry and it won't hurt it. So you're just going to pop that back in once it's completely dry. Close it back up. And then you have another filter that's located in the ball here. Now, for the most part, you want to turn the vacuum on its side. Now, I'm in a limited space, so I've got to, you know, just do it like this. But you want to make sure that you can unscrew this purple dial here. And this side of the ball with the purple screw is where your HEPA filter is. So you take that half of the ball off and then turn the filter to the left yes and it comes off it's a little tight um, and then you can rinse this underwater um, but generally after a while it is best to replace these they say they're washable which they are to a certain extent, but once they get like really, really black, like you can see some of the blackness in here. Um, once they get really dark, you just want to go ahead and change these. I mean, they just, um, you know, they're not lifetime. I mean, filters in general are not lifetime. Uh, no matter what the manufacturer says, eventually, excuse me, eventually filters are going to need to be replaced. And this is one of them. Now, do not use detergent on these pleated filters. The detergent will not come out and it will leave residue clogging it up. So never ever use detergent with this. Just water only when you're rinsing these out. Um, and again, you know, I would say once every couple of years, you probably want to change these just when they get really dark and black, um, and you really can't see light through it. Like, for example, I'm sure you can see the light through mine there. Um, you know, this one could probably use to be changed at some point. Um, but it's good enough for me. This is not a primary machine that I use. It was a trash find. Um, so you're going to line it up. And then you're going to wait until it sets in. And you're going to twist it to the right to lock it in place. And by the way, make sure that this is completely dry for 24 hours once again. Um, this filter is important to keep clean and changed. Um, I would say every three to five years, depending upon how much you use the unit or whatever, this should be changed. If this has any odors that are lingering in it, such as pet odors and stuff, change it. Throw it away, get a brand new one. Um, 
You know, filters only last so long. There is no such thing as a lifetime filter. And whatever they consider a lifetime, Dyson considers a lifetime as in five years. You can get longer than five years out of a Dyson. So, um, it's, uh, it's important to know that. And then you just put the ball back on. Make sure it's all lined up. And you're going to turn this purple screw until you hear it click kind of like a gas cap on your car. And there you go. And that should spin freely. It's really just rounded half sphere wheels. It's not really a ball. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, that's that. And that's it for maintenance. Now, troubleshooting. If you're not getting suction or airflow from the hose or wand, this is what you're going to check. Um, and this was the reason this was thrown out, believe it or not. This is, I mean, if I can save somebody else from throwing one of these away, I think throwing away a vacuum cleaner because it's clogged is a huge mistake, and especially with an expensive one like this. This is a $400 machine. Um, so, what you're going to do is you're going to remove the cord, and take the cord off the machine. Um, and by the way, if I didn't mention, you want to make sure that your vacuum cleaner is unplugged before doing any maintenance or service on it. And so, should not be plugged in for safety. Um, so, what you're going to do is, let's see if I can get up here and show you a little more, more clearly. Um, Okay, so when it comes to these Dysons, they're, they have narrow tubes. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're not sucking up debris that's too big or, you know, which a lot of people do. And a lot of people don't pay attention to what they're picking up, but you have to. You know, because otherwise you're going to wind up with issues. So you're going to raise this wand up. And then there's a red button. Here, let me see if you can see this. Yeah. There's a red button here. You're going to press that. And then it pulls out like that. Now, with this wand... You want to look and make sure you see light through it. You see that? See my finger through there? You want to make sure it's clear. Now, this was thrown away because it was clogged on this end. And I was able to unclog it very easily using a little stick poking through there. Um, some vacuum cleaners, you can take a broom handle these Dysons, they're so narrow that you probably want to take like a little, um, oh, uh, probably like a, a smaller diameter, um, object, um, 
possibly a coat hanger, something like that, um, and push it down through. Um, if you have a small uh, rod or small, anything that's smaller than this opening here, because you don't want to force anything that's barely squeezing through because then you might not be able to get it back out. Um, but you can poke it through each end. Um, I used a bamboo stick um, to unclog this. So that is a, an idea. Um, and make sure you see light through it. That's your wand. Now, if the hose is clogged, can remove the bin from the front and there is a red switch here Let me get this down here so you can see um, there's a red release switch right here See this uh, clear thing? It's right behind there. And that's another place you can look for blockages in the air path. I'll get to that shortly. Let's see if I can get this out. It's never been out since I've had it. I've had it a week now. supposed to come out. Um, maybe I just can't get enough grip on it with my hands, but anyway, if you're getting suction through the hose, you should be good, but if you're not, you can pull this straight out. Um, you should be good to go. Now, that's if you don't have hose suction, and that was basically what the reason for this being thrown out was the wand was clogged is the most simple thing to unclog and I'm still blown away that it was thrown away um, but yeah but on, the, on a positive note I at least have it to show you guys how to maintain these so, that's if you don't have suction at the hose. Now, if you don't have suction at the floor head, here's what you can do. I'm going to put this back on. Um, and to test suction, you've got to make sure that the bin is on. You know, because otherwise you're not going to have anything. Um, get down here. Okay, um, now if you're not getting suction at the floor head, um, make sure that the brush roll is turned on with this switch here. So that's got to be on. And it should default to on when you turn the vacuum on. Um, if you don't have suction from the brush roll, here's what you're gonna do. First of all, you're gonna take the bin off, and then this goes for both the hose suction and the floor suction. Make sure that there's nothing obstructing this tube here. There's no clogs in there. This little access port, you want to check in there, make sure there's nothing blocked. Now there's a there's a port in here 
that goes down to the floor head too. And that's what this access port is for. So, if you've checked all those, I'm gonna lay the vacuum back. And then there's this. Let's see if I can get it. There's this red thing here. You're gonna make sure that is your clip for your floor nozzle. I'm gonna remove that clip and save it. Don't lose it. And then you're gonna pull the head off. Just like that, pull it straight off. And then you're gonna check in here for any blockages in that port here and usually you can take like needle nose and just pull stuff out um, these Dysons are notorious for clogging um, so in there and also you want to make sure there's nothing caught in this hose here um, which I believe it just clicks in, but I'm not sure. And then, you also want to make sure that there's nothing caught in the opening here. And then what you want to do is... Mm, Move this out of my way. Okay, so to remove the bottom here, there's these two red levers. I'm going to swing them forward, both of them, and then that should take the bottom nozzle off. And, you know, make sure there's no debris in here. Uh, things like that. Um, and there shouldn't be. Usually. Uh, and then you can take this out. Now this little channel in here is notorious for getting stuff caught in it. Pet hair, uh, lint, debris, all kinds of stuff. Um, now, what you can do is, I believe these are T15 screws. I could be wrong, but just try Torx bits and see what fits. But you can take these screws out, one here, and one here, one here, and one here. And then pull these brushes out and clean them off, make sure there's nothing caught in the grooves here. Um, and then, you know, make sure that everything's clear in here. Um, no debris, no dirt, nothing like that. And then that should solve your issue. Um, then you're going to put this back on with the front, front end first, and that should line up and go right in. Now these red things have got to pop into their little holes here, and then you're going to click this lever these levers in and there you go your head is all there you go and here's string and debris so I'm gonna pull that out while I'm in here because you know let's not have any of that hair in here um, just the more hair you have on your brush roll the more problems 
that you're going to run into, such as, you know, bogging it down, such as it not cleaning effectively, and possibly damaging the cleaner head. If it gets into the motor part here, um, if I can show you, if it gets into there, um, you're just going to have major issues. Um, and it's going to melt stuff, and you're probably going to have to buy a new cleaner head, which these are about 100 bucks, Not cheap. So, just keep them clean to prevent issues and stuff like that. Just pull any thread, hair, string, carpet fiber, whatever is on there off. And it's pretty easy to clean off. There's no ingest bars here, which is really nice. Dyson used to have those, now they don't. I actually appreciate that because it's wide open. You don't even have to take the bottom plate off to get to it. It's just, oh, it's so simple. So that should take care of it. Um, and then you want to put cleaner head back on. Make sure that the power pins align. And you're gonna push it straight back on. should go on and then it's a little bit hard to show you I think you can kind of see it um, and I showed you where that little clip was this little red thing you know it goes around the bottom of the clear part of the nozzle, not the neck. It goes around the neck of the nozzle, not the port, and it just snaps right in. And that locks your head in, and you are done. Now, one other thing that I want to mention is, you know, once in a great while you want to take this and clean out the cyclones and things like that you know take this whole upper assembly out of here which you know if you release the bin and open it there's a button here i'm not going to open it because it's got stuff in it um there's a button here you press this whole top section along with the cyclone pack in the bin here will come out and then you can open this up take the filter out like I showed you and then you can take like a leaf blower or maybe you have a shot vac with a blower function or an air compressor or something and obviously take it outside to do this and just blow out all the dust that's accumulated in there. That will take care of odors that might be lingering or anything like that. Um, as well as keeps the cyclones free of excess dust that may um, slow down the performance and all of that. But other than that, it should be good. There's not a whole lot to these, really, when it comes to basic stuff. Um, if you have a major repair, then that's a whole other story. I mean, these Dysons are kind of overkill on the design. Um, they're cool, and they, they work, and they're very nice to use. But if you have anything more than just that simple stuff it can really get a bit much <laughs> so um but yeah 
Oh, and one other thing with the bin. Here's this max line here. Um, you know, when it gets to about there, you want to dump it. Um, try not to go above that. Because um, it could clog the screen inlet and stuff like that. So, that about does it for this um, maintenance and troubleshooting video on your Dyson Ball Animal Pro Plus or any similar variants. Um, this is a Dyson UP13. Um, it also goes, uh, like I said, for the Dyson DC40, Dyson DC41, Dyson DC65 and most of your ball um, vacuums um, that you know have the filter on the top and this basic setup um, this design has been around for over 10 years at this point and uh, so but yeah that's uh, that's just the simple maintenance steps so Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more. I will have more videos.